Welcome to the Speak Packed Podcast, where high performing speakers and the producers who hire them merge to give you the insider secrets to the lucrative speaking industry. Antonia Rose, your podcast host and celebrated speaker agent, unveils insider success strategies. Discover a nexus of thought leaders and bookers maximizing your potential in each and every episode. Your ticket to ultimate speaking success begins right here. Catch the transformative insights waiting for you on the Speak Packed podcast, hosted by the industry powerhouse herself, Antoniette Rose. Welcome back to Speak Packed. Today we have a true ray of sunshine with us in the house, and I am thrilled to bring her to you because so many of us know that we have a message, we have value, we have curated solutions that people need to hear and learn about, but we may have some self-doubt and some self-confidence issues that go along with that. And Avery Sunshine helps you blow past all of those things that might otherwise hold your voice back. She's got some beautiful strategies And she helps people across the globe, worldwide, to get their voices out there in a bigger, better, broader way. So welcome to the show, Avery. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. Thanks for having me. You are so welcome. I'm thrilled that you agreed to this interview because I cannot wait to dive in to these topics. And I know that anytime we devote our lives to something, it generally comes from a bit of a backstory. So with your focus on such topics as selective mutism, on social anxiety, on anything with that that might hold our voices back, whether it's self-worth, self-confidence, even self-love, Tell me what brought you to this space to devote your life to this topic. So I've always struggled socially for most of my childhood into my early adult life. Um, Long story short, I had two daughters who were also diagnosed with social anxiety and selective mutism. And I knew at that moment that they can't suffer. Like, I will do anything in my power to get them on the other side because I know what that feels like. It's really close to home. So I started learning. I started getting them enrolled into intensives at a state where that's all they did was work on using their brave voice. And then once they got into the other side of it, then I knew, okay, I can do more work on myself. I can dive deeper and grow myself. So I started doing emotional intelligence trainings left and right. I started, you know, reading, listening to podcasts, and then I got certified to be a life coach internationally, ICF, ACC. A turning point for me was I went on a women's trip to Israel and everyone sharing their stories and what they learned that day. And I was just like trembling. Like I could not share. Mm. I couldn't share. Like, and people were like trying to pull it out of me. I would tear up. I could not share. Then my oldest daughter turned 13. And so it was time for her to have her bat mitzvah, right? Well, I am not Orthodox, but we ended up having her bat mitzvah at an orthodox temple, which means on Shabbos, there's no microphone. (laughs) And here I am. I've never done a speech before in my life, scared to death. I really had to project my voice because this is big, beautiful temple. And I also knew that at that moment, I had to honor my daughter. Mm. I couldn't let fear get in the way. Mm -hmm. And so once I did that and I lived through it and people loved my speech and I felt proud of myself to, one, honor my daughter and to stretch myself out of my comfort zone. And then I started learning public speaking and started diving into more trainings and doing public speaking and 
uh, facilitating my own trainings. And, um, you know, we're best often, we're most often best to suit the person that we once were, right? Because we've been there, we've lived through it, we know what it feels like. Right. So oftentimes our strengths, what held us back in life, once we can get to the other side, becomes our fire and our yes. sparks <laughs> and uh, our superpower, right? So that's how I got into this. Okay. Well, uh, what a story. I mean, if any, if anything is going to bust through a hiccup, it's our children, right? It's going yes. to cause yes. us to bust through a hiccup. And you have obviously struck a pretty powerful chord. You have tens of thousands of followers and it can only, that only happens when you strike a chord within people, when they're like, yes, I identify, I understand that. I want to I want to get past that. Right. For those who may not be familiar with selective mutism, can you explain a little bit about what that is? So it's a social, it's an anxiety disorder. It's very similar to social anxiety. Oftentimes they go hand in hand, but they can also sometimes not go hand in hand. Selective mutism is an extreme fear, such as a phobia of talking or communication. And it could be verbal communication. It could be just communicating at all, even nonverbal in a social setting or specific triggering, you know, such as a birthday party or preschool or mm -hmm. something along those lines. That the fear is too big in the moment that they just not choosing to, they just shut down and they cannot do it at that moment. These kids, these teens, these adults, oftentimes at home or when they're comfortable, are like a completely different person. Loud, funny, bossy, putting on shows, <laughs> you know, ruling the house. <laughs> um, so it's really a completely different, it's almost like two different people. We all have someone in our lives we love that we see that, right? We know the real person. And then they get into this social situation and you're like, be you, you're amazing, be you. And they just can't. It's not, it's not necessarily a choice. It's something in there, right? Mm -hmm. So how is it that you are able to draw out and, and help people feel comfortable utilizing their brave voice, as you call it? Yeah, so... First off, I never take a client that I know that I can't help or that I'm not confident in helping or that is a good fit for me. Because just like I need to be a good fit for them, they also need to be a good fit for me. Yes. Um, because we're team and that's what it takes. It create takes a team to get to the other side of this. And so it's really about connection, empathy compassion, creating that bond and that trust with the client or the kid or the teen, or if it's, if you're a teacher and you have a student that has selective mutism and knowing that, that they can trust you mm. and that they're safe and that you guys are working on it together and that you're not going to ask them to do some crazy, big, brave practice, that it's going to be slow, baby, consistent steps up the communication ladder without the pressure of talking. So we want to take the pressure away. Yes. So safety, number one. Yes. And it sounds to me, I haven't had the yeah. privilege of seeing how you seeing you in action, but it sounds to me that you put the power back in their court that they're yeah. not being pushed or forced into a situation that they're not comfortable with, that you step them in to a place where then they feel the freedom to be themselves again. Yeah. So we meet them where they are, build that bond, build that trust, build that connection. And then, you know, we discuss and we take baby steps towards, you know, brave exposure practice or expanding our communication circle or, 
joining in in a dance class, whatever it may be. There's so much brave practice. It doesn't always need to include talking. It could just be going into a birthday party where you feel uncomfortable. There's yeah. so many things that we could do to stretch ourselves out of our comfort zone and grow. Do you see this plaguing? I'll say plaguing, right? Because at any time <laughs> a voice is held back, that's a really sad, that's, that's a really sad thing, right? It is really sad. It, is it discriminant or indiscriminant? Meaning children face this, maybe preteens and teens face this, but how about high achieving adults? Do you see it? Yeah. I mean, it can happen to anyone. And the, the thing is, is that it usually happens when we're young. And so the longer that we wait to get treatment, the harder it is to turn that around. Because if you think about it, like, let's say you're 30 and you, you were diagnosed with social anxiety or selective mutism, and you have done no real work on it, that's 30 years of practicing those ways of being. And so we go to, you know, maybe needing to withhold or wanting to avoid embarrassment and to that, that becomes who we are. Yes. Do you see that sometimes some people, especially adults who have gone without the help that they really needed at the, at the younger age, overcompensate, like become the class clown or become a humorist or even a comedian or an actor or something where they're forcing themselves into an uncomfortable spotlight, but they're kind of coming into it as somebody else. That could happen. I mean, just like someone who's holding their voice back, it's the opposite is very, uh, it's an anxiety response to talking too much, not comfortable with silence or awkward in silence or feeling like you need to fill the space. Um, so I would say yes. I mean, I don't know for sure, but I would yes. imagine so. I Until our conversation, I wasn't even aware of selective mutism. But as you're speaking and explaining these things, of course, as a speaker agent, I come across speakers all the time. And most of the time in my circle, they're high achievers. Mm -hmm. And they've had this message to spread for a long time. And they're just really kind of getting together the courage or, you know, they they might call it right timing. But in the end, it's it's generally the courage to really step into their voices. The ones that I see that have come from a place of maybe have been, been a comedian or uh a stage actor or actress, they have to, it's almost like an undo and a redo. Like now that they had, they, they got to do that as somebody else, but now that they're stepping forward as themselves, it's almost as if they could have had an illustrious career, but it's yeah. almost as if they feel almost like naked in yeah. front of people. Yeah. And acting and music and theater has been so supportive for my two daughters. They're, you know, they're both very much into the performing arts and the and that whole world. And I can't speak highly enough about that because it does give you public speaking experience. It does let you practice using your brave voice. It does put you on stage. And it also puts you with a team of like-minded people that have the same interest in, as you. And yeah. it also builds confidence. But there is a difference, and many of my clients who, you know, will get up the brave ladder, will start, you know, expanding our circle, and they might be really confident in sharing a fact-based question or answering a fact-based question, but really struggle sharing their thoughts, their opinions, their feelings. Mm -hmm. And that is scary. That's our authentic self. Yes. I hear actors all the time, like ones you would never, and, and big influencers. I, I come across them, and it always surprises me every single time that right before getting on a stage, they just want to throw up. They want every excuse not to have to get on that stage. And they're they're in it all the time. They're, they are in the spotlight every time. I don't know that it ever gets easier. But I think your mission 
and the the vision behind your voice is what carries you onto that stage and helps you get over those jitters because the message is bigger than you, right? It's not about you. It's yeah. about the impact. Yeah. yeah. Changing people's lives or if someone can relate to your story or maybe they can't relate to your story, but they can relate to your ways of being, that mm. you were resilient, that you were courageous. Um. So yeah, sharing, I, it becomes that our passion is bigger than the fear. The passion is bigger than the fear. Yes. <laughs> so tell me, what do you think is the most important ingredient for a speaker to share with their audience? Your story, <laughs> your personal story, as scary as it can be. Um, I believe that that builds connection. It builds relatability. It builds trust between the audience and the speaker. It gives them a background of who you are and that you're human and that you're not on a stage doing a show performing, that you're human just like them. And so that to me is probably the most special ingredient in my book anyways. <laughs> I love that you said that. Me. And because yeah. those who follow this show, I am a broken record, right? The first yeah. thing that you have to do when you enter any stage or any space where you're the one that's delivering a message is right off the bat, build community and connection so that everybody in that space knows that they are with the right people <clears throat> at the right time. Yeah. And and in the presence of of support, you know, support. So how better to do that by getting a little bit vulnerable and sharing your story? We share obviously from our our wounds, not from uh, from our scars, not from open wounds, because then that can just be kind. Of, you don't never want your audience to pity you. Yes, but through your triumphs, they can see. Hey, I can't even imagine that Avery was ever not able to get her voice out there because she's radiant and she's got so much to give. What a shame if, if she, if all of that were to help be held back and then be able to reflect on that from them for themselves. So yes, storytelling, is that something you work with, with your clients, their own stories? Um, yes. I mean, taking ownership and also, you know, if there was a traumatic event or there was some kind of trauma, I mean, what therapy is in general, and I mine is not therapy. I do not diagnose. I do not, you know, treat. I am a life coach. But what therapy is, is reframing our story, which is our lens, our narrative, the, the way we view ourselves and also the world around us. Mm -hmm. So if there is something that we need to reframe so that we can become unstuck, so it's not holding us back, then we reframe it in a way that is authentic to them, that they can own, take their power back and use it to fuel themselves forward. So, yes. And all, all for what? Well, why, why do we put ourselves through that? Through what? Reframing yeah. our story? Yeah, through even wanting to get vulnerable, share share parts of our story, get into that uncomfortable place of putting yeah. ourselves in front of people. Yeah, there's definitely as a speaker prices you pay. Yes. <laughs> and there's rewards. I mean, the rewards are that if, if someone in the audience can relate to you or your story or has been through something similar and you touch their heart. That's one life changed. And if someone doesn't relate to your story, but they relate to, wow, she kept going and she was resilient and courageous and, to, you know, had tenacity, then they could, that can be their takeaway. Mm -hmm. um, but to, there's also, you know, prices we pay and it's scary 
to be vulnerable and to put ourselves out there. It does come with consequences. Yes. Um, so what, you know, as a speaker, when we put ourselves out there, we are going to get judged. It's that's a that's a fact. And some people are going to love you. Some people aren't going to understand you. Some people are going to judge you. Some people are going to form opinions or gossip about you. But we have to have such a strong core of why, like our core message has to be what's stronger than what their opinions are. Mm -hmm. Ah, I love that you said as a speaker, there are rewards, but there's also prices. And and even in the prices, prices, there are gifts, like putting yourself in an, in an uncomfortable space, right? No growth comes without pain. No growth comes without uh, being uncomfortable. Yeah. So in your quest to impact and, and, and bring transformation to other lives, you're actually giving a gift to yourself as well. Yes. So it's just this whole beautiful ecosystem. It's and healing said, for me. It's freeing for me. When we share our truth and speak our story, we release the power that it has over us mm. and reduce any limiting beliefs we may have about ourselves or shame or guilt of how we grew up when we put it out into the space. And there's also consequences for doing that. <laughs> Some people are not going to like you doing that. Some family members are not going to like you doing that. Um, but the thing is, is it's your story. You yes. own it. It's yours. You do what you want with it. You share it. You tell it. And not in a way to point fingers. But it's yours. And there should be no secrets in life. Like there the should be no are family secrets. secrets. Secrets can be prisons, right? Yeah. yeah. And I mean, it's a secret is to protect, you know, the family's reputation or, or their reputation. But the reality is, why is there secrets in the first place? Oh, you just struck a chord on me. <laughs> I didn't yeah. expect that one. So yeah. growing up, you know, we had actual phones that were tethered to some sort of yeah, I did too device. <laughs> um, yeah. and, and so you could, you know, you couldn't go in your bedroom and talk or whatever. You're right there in the family living space. And I'm from a very Italian family, and I always had to be careful about what I said because someone, my mother, my aunt, whoever was around. You don't share that. That's a family, right? <gasps> you don't share that. That's family. And it's just like, what can I say? You know, what what can I say? What can't I say? And um having that just empowerment to get your voice out there, be vulnerable, be you, um, is a lot of the work that you do. And yes, if you impact one life, you actually impact countless untold lives, right? Because one person's journey, even if it shifts ever so slightly because of the transformation you made in their lives, people you may never, ever, ever meet, see, even know about, their lives have been touched by by that transformation in that person as well. So talk mm -hmm. about gifts, right? Just knowing that the power of your voice, even if you just have one day on this earth for whatever reason, one more day, Right, that that power of what you can impart through your voice can live on for forever. That you just don't know the end of it. Yes. Um, and then you also, speaking of power, you said something that I felt like was very, very telling, and that is when we allow ourselves to have our voice kind of sequestered or allow self-confidence or a lack of self-love, whatever it might be, hold us down, then we've also allowed it to imprison us. Yeah. And by stepping out of that, we're basically taking the power away from it. I really love the way you said that. 
And that comes with the prices we pay, like, you know, for sharing our story, if there was trauma or some kind of family secret that you had to always be quiet about, like your story is your life, like that's your life. And you had to be quiet then through the trauma, through the pain. And then now you're expected to be quiet again? No. No, it doesn't work like that. Like you've already suffered. You've already been through the holding the secrets and the quiet. And now it's time for you to spread your wings and be free. And how many others can be inspired by that? Like, wow, she went through that and she's she's good with saying it. Like, why am I holding this secret? Why, why do I feel like nobody's going to accept me or love me if if I share that side of my life, right? Um, it is so empowering. So as we're coming to, as we're winding things down, tell me a little bit about, I know just from you and I visiting that you had severe social anxiety. It wasn't just a little discomfort, but it was, yeah. it was pretty crippling, pretty severe. Mm-hmm. How did you outside of what you wanted for your daughters, like how did you step into a speaking arena where you now have a lot of people in your audience and you're affecting a lot of lives? Like what, what, what inside of you got you from that severe anxiety to stepping, to putting yourself in in such a, a bright light? Wanting to turn what was once my biggest fear, my trauma, the hurt I went through, the family dynamic I grew up in, using it in a way to make a difference in this world and using it in a way to make a difference in my life and to make a difference in my kids' life, right? Like break Mm -hmm. the cycle, do something different for them and to there's nothing more meaningful to me than seeing my clients get results. I am a thousand percent committed to their transformation. I take it very seriously. I'm very hands on. <laughs> um, and I am their biggest cheerleader because their results, you know, to an extent, you can coach someone and the, your client may not get the results that you hope for them to have. But they're, they are a reflection of you. And so I see us as team. I see the audience as team. I want them to have results. I want them to be free. I want them to live a life that their heart longs for and free their voice because everyone's voice matters. Yes. Okay. Everyone's. Can you go a little bit deeper into your audience and your clients being a reflection of you? What do you mean by that? It's so crazy, but it's true. (laughs) So I'm a little quirky. I have the orange hair. I'm a little flamboyant. I'm very, I'm not an artist, but I will say that I'm creative. And so what we put out into the world comes back to us, right? So Every one of my clients has been like artistic or unique or a little eccentric in a way or cool, creative, um, fun, outgoing with me. It's just, it's really cool to see. And then I'll see that some of their struggles, like some of the exercise that, you know, that I'll give them or the homework that I'll give them they'll resist. And I'll see, ah, that's a reflection of me. That's, that's a mirror of, you know, something that I've been through or maybe something that I need to go through. Um, So it's really interesting. Yeah. Full circle, right? So as you, as you get vulnerable, as you get real and open and authentic, then you just attract those who connect with that that we're, like you can speak in front of an audience and there's going to be people in that audience that are going to latch on to you, latch on to your every word. Mm-hmm. I can come up after you, speak to that very same audience and some that you didn't necessarily connect or reach for whatever reason, connect with me, right? It's just because there's something in you 
that mm-hmm. resonates and that can only come by sharing your story, being authentic, being vulnerable when you're trying to be the perfect picture of who you mm-hmm. think you're supposed to be up there, yeah. then really you're connecting with no one. Yeah. Because you're not even connecting with yourself. No, because when we're nervous like that, and I will get nervous, I'm not saying anxiety never shows up. <laughs> it does. I just know how to navigate it now. Um, but it's definitely still there at times, and that's okay. Um, but when we're nervous, we're in our head. Yes. And we're focused on ourselves. Mm-hmm. And when we can get in front of an audience or on a stage and not make it about us, but make it about them. We are not there to get anything from the audience. We are there to give. Perfection right there. You have just said it, everything in a nutshell, right? If we just get over ourselves, we can actually make make an impact, right? It's not about us. It's about them. And And that's give to them. Yes. And that alone is cure for anxiety, right? When it, when it's not, then you're no longer wondering if your hair is out of place or, you know, what people are thinking that, that becomes so not even relevant, not even important because it, it becomes more about the message and the impact and the transformation. Yeah. Speaking from your heart and, you know, your gut and not just what a speech you have memorized or, you know, if we're attached to the note cards, uh, we're not, that's going to fail. <laughs> <laughs> that's going to fail somewhere. We're going to lose a note card or forget the note cards or something. So it has to be in our hearts. It has to be in our DNA for us to share. Ah, oh, beautiful, beautiful. I know there are going to be a lot of people listening to the show that are going to want to know how do we get a hold of Avery Sunshine? So what are some of the best ways for people to hear you talk more and learn more about you. So I'm on LinkedIn. I'm very active on LinkedIn. Um, It's under Avery Sunshine. You'll also see Sunshine Mindset. I have a Facebook group called Sunshine Mindset. I do have Instagram and TikTok, all those things. I'm working on building those up as well as my YouTube channel. And I have a website, sunshine-mindset.com sunshine-mindset.com. So everybody should be able to know how to yes. spell that. With, if you're just listening in, Avery is A-V-E-R-Y, Avery Sunshine. And she's definitely a Ray. <laughs> um, so I am going to close out with our signature question. This is Speak Pact. And we're together because we collectively, we want to make an impact, a good impact in this world, right? So the pact to impact. What is a challenge or or just a call to action that you might be able to give the audience listening to this, this episode of something that they can do to further their voice and their impact? Brave exposure practice. And it doesn't have to be a giant, scary Thing. It could be today, I'm going to hold the door open for someone at the coffee shop and say, hi, and how was your day? Or today, if you're scared of escalators, you're going to make an effort to go up and down the escalators. I did that with my daughters, by the way, for two hours. <laughs> oh, my goodness, Anything two hours. that is new or scary that you want to try, I invite you to try it. Mm. And baby steps, small, consistent baby steps. Small, that's consistent matters. baby steps. Okay, that's beautiful. That's a beautiful yes. note to end on. Perfect. I take your challenge and I hope you, our, our yes. beautiful audience, takes her challenge because together, collectively, we are the ones that make a difference and help transform lives. Yes. Thank you for being with us, Avery. It was so much fun. I so appreciated having having you with me. Thank ciao, you. Ciao for, for now, me. everyone. Yeah. <laughs> anytime. Come back anytime. <laughs> yes. Thank you for listening to the Speak Pact podcast. 
to become a recommended speaker of Antoniet's WPC Speaker Agency, or you are a host or planner looking for a dynamic expert in optimized performance, Antoniet would like to personally meet with you. Secure a time with her at speakerbooker.com. Again, that is speakerbooker.com. It all begins with a vision, a voice, and a pact to impact. Join the Speak Pact movement by joining our new private Facebook group at the link in our show notes. Find us on nearly every social media platform at One Antoniet. That's number one, A-N-T-O-N-I-E-T-T-E, or simply hashtag SpeakPact.